after I came out of Pelican Bay, uh, the uh, guards came to my uh, cell one morning. I was cellmates with a dude named Underdog from Hoover, and they said, uh, they said San Diego wants you. So they refiled on me. Uh, and when I got to San Diego, I found out that they had filed uh, charges on me for attempted murder. And uh, they gave me uh, 15 years. So at 15 years, I said, man, I ain't, I ain't doing this self shit. You know, plus I was already suffering from anxiety uh, uh, concerns from being in the shoe, from being locked up in that cell in the shoe for months without never coming outside. I was damn near blind when they finally opened the fucking door from no sunlight and shit, so I was really a no-sell motherfucker after that experience. Man, the worst thing that I experienced in the shoe was I, I thought I was having heart attack uh, because I stayed in there so long and you don't realize what's going on. I was sitting there one day and my heart started beating real fast. It was pounding and shit, you know, and I said, well, damn, you know, uh, I'm having a heart attack. I mean, that's what I thought, you know what I'm saying? And uh, so uh, I told them I had a medical emergency. They went and hooked me up on EKG and all that shit. They said, ain't shit wrong with you. You know, it happened again a few days later. They did the same thing. They said, ain't shit wrong with you. They said, this motherfucker's trying to get out this cell. You know, he's just trying to take a walk, which would be a reasonable thing to do too, you know, really, to come up out that bitch. But yeah. But the thing was, I really was going through it. So finally one day, when I had one of those episodes, uh, uh, a, a doctor stopped and he looked and he said, you know what, he said, uh, he said, Is you, maybe, he said, are you, have you been under stress lately? I said, you stupid <laughs> motherfucker, I'm in the fucking shoe. Now let me ask you, uh, I see two Latin brothers over here on the side. Uh, obviously, the 40s in, in San Diego embraced the Latino guys. How did that come about? Well, you know, they did have sets back in the days, even in L.A., you know, when they had Watts Grape Street. Yeah. They called it WVG, Watts Vario yeah, LA, Grape. Yeah, L.A. actually had a couple sets like that, yeah, Watts Vario Grape and the Grape Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a homie uh, named Ricky Morris, uh, Rick Rock, they called him. Somebody told me, rest in peace, but uh, Rick Rock, you know, he was from, he had to tat, tat, said WVG with the grapes and stuff. So a, a lot of them, like we are, uh, shared neighborhoods. Like, damn near every set shared. Yeah. A neighborhood, you know, with like a a, a Mexican set. You I know like what to I'm say saying? Same hood, mm -hmm. different game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> same hood, Market Street neighborhood. We've been here since the '70s. Same. Oh, right. same thing. So they're Cook. from they're from a different set. Yeah, Mario okay. Market yeah. Street. Yeah. Right. Okay. And it's more appropriate for them to answer because that's in yeah, their in answer. their yeah. in their generation. You know, yeah. so I'm gonna stay out. Was of it that. like that when when you was coming up, Bullet? Yeah. yeah, I fuck with they big. I fuck with Big yeah. Wolf. You know what I mean? They homie and shit. We went through. What's the name of the barrio? Market Mario Street. Market. You know what I mean? So we went through Y.A. together, Campo and all that shit. You know what I mean? So, you know, even with the with the uh, shit when it comes to the race shit, me and him was like, well, okay, that shit cool, cuz, but somebody fuck with us, we gonna fuck them up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't give a fuck about none of that. You my bro. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes it go beyond that. You know what I mean? Being an OG and gangbanging for years, but doing a lot of uh, penitentiary time transitioned me to another uh, place. You know, especially when I talk about being in Pelican Bay, it was over racial issues. It was over the fact that every time I went to prison, it was like blacks against the white, blacks against the Mexican, blacks against the police. It kind of transitioned me a little bit from the gang shit, and it kind of gave me, kind of made my priority more of a, a black issue. So now when I'm out here and I see police uh, gunning down my people and shit like that, I still have the gang mentality of retaliation and shit like that. And it kind of pushes me into thinking, you know, these motherfuckers shouldn't be getting away with this. You know, I dislike the bloods and stuff in the early part of my life. Now I hate racist motherfucking white people and fucking police. I can't stand they motherfucking ass. And I don't like them get, being able to get away with shit to my people, you know, like Eric Gardner, my sister Sandra Bland, and all of them, it's time for us to step up and start putting in work on they motherfucking ass uh, because, you know, th this is Crip and everything, but we got that kind of energy in us, so I would love to see that energy diverted and start defending not only our set and our communities, but our people as well. So i am tell you motherfuckers now, you motherfucking skinheads, you punk-ass motherfucking police and shit, Fucking with my people, don't get too fucking close to home because some shit might crack. Ain't no gang flawless, right? Yeah. But if we get, if we can reach the majority, 
then we we good with that. It's gonna always be some violence. You know what I'm saying? When you're dealing with a gang, that's just the mentality of a gang. You know what I'm saying? But it's up to us to either at least try. You know what right. I'm saying? And show them a better way because they don't have to do what we did. To be honest with you, they don't have to do all the robbery. They don't have to do all the murders and shootings and kills. They don't have to do that. We did that. They don't have to go to the penitentiary because we already we branded were, ourselves. That's you know what, what I say right here and here. We, everybody that. know who we is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. They know about stick. They know about hall. They know about trade off. They know about Rick. They know about cat. They know. They know everything about us. You know what I'm saying? They, so what, what else we got to prove? We got to master this money now. We got to master building business. Really take our community. You know what I'm saying? And we got to master. Mm -hmm. Employing each other. I think 10, 15, 20 years from now, every hood is going to have people in college, uni at yeah. university, graduating. I I'm, think we're slowly transitioning well, I'm talking into that about, mentality. In fact, Chris, you know, and we, we got to we gotta get into the positions. We, we got to have homies that's lawyers. We have to have homeboys on, on Wall Street. If we really want to grow, yeah. you know what I'm saying? We got to have that mentality. We got to have the same aggressive mentality that we grew up game banging and put our energy in something else. And, be, and I, I believe if we do that, we can be rich as we want to be. And we are only we we, we we only can limit ourselves. Shout out to uh, you know, all the cats, man. That's that's having success from the city of San Diego. You know what I'm saying? Nick Cannon, the homie Faison Love. You know what I mean? Uh, actually, Jam Master J hooked us up back in the day. Me and Faison, he was uh, clowning, talking shit on some of my skits for my uh, some of my music. You know what I mean? So, shout out to those brothers too, man, for holding it down and and, and making a way for themselves. And um, um, I'm proud of them too. You know what I mean? So so. We're going to keep it cracking and make, make this shit bigger out here and make the scene bigger and um, keep it on a positive level. And it's time for us to really clamp down financially and really make this shit happen. Thanks for watching StreetTV.net. If you're not subscribed, please hit that button below and click the bell to receive alerts and notifications. Like and comment below to give us your feedback and be sure to watch the two related videos to the right. If you want to support this platform or follow us on social media, visit the links in the description and listen to our weekly podcast, The Gangster Chronicles, every Thursday. And thanks for watching StreetTV.net.